signal on my on my uh, phone to let me know it's almost time for me to get over here and do my show because you know I ain't been able to do it for the last couple of weeks so I wanted to make sure that I got here on time so I live by hour in advance so first somebody need a ride I give them a ride but then I go through a sobriety checkpoint now thank God it wasn't one of those nights. Because they straight, they saw two brothers with dreadlocks. And you know, we was over sitting on the side of the road getting checked. So, you know, one of the things that I'm definitely going to do with some of the men that I'm working with is to, to show them how to interact with these officers. Especially in these days and times. Because even though you may be justified in your anger and upset, the cost of going to war about some bullshit may not be worth it. So, you know, I got over, got respectful, got my stuff out and let them know where I was coming from. Even though that wasn't their business, they asked, they, you know, so rather than have an argument, just have a simple conversation and keep it moving. But for some reason, coming from the southwest on, um, oh, by the way, for those that's in Columbus, the sobriety point was on Refugee Road, right behind Eastland Mall. So, avoid it. Now, coming from the south, southeast of Columbus, to get up north, there was some type of traffic jam on, um, I, I, um, on 70 West going towards 71 south and north going to 71 the 71 split so i had a hard time so i had to get off on the east side and travel through the east side to get here so when i get here my mic's not working and i'm like whoa you know so i gotta pull out my my other mic because you know ain't no guest here and and i'm like wow you know what, what's going on so i'm trying to so I'm like, man, listen, listen, this is crazy, but yo, I'm here, and it's time to get it popping. The only, on, the only way that we know how here on a Jammy Journey broadcast and on my Freestyle Friday to see what emerged. So it's been a crazy last couple of weeks. I haven't been on the air lately because I've been trying to put together a book and finish um, editing my newer books and I will be pulling down some of my older books to edit them as well um, because I noticed uh, in my fervor to get them published I skip over a lot of mistakes so this time I'm walking through and taking out all of the mistakes I want to make sure that I eliminate all the mistakes so that I can give you the quality now I, I, I don't mind there being some mistakes because I want to make sure you read I want people to comment on my stuff. I want people to be angry. I want you to ban my book. I want you to disprove what I'm saying. I want you to say that the self-mastery system don't work. I want to hear some comments. I want you to tell me how it's working. You know what I'm saying? What evidence do I have that it works? You know what I'm saying? So, please, please do some comments. You like the show? Comment on the show. Let me know what's going on in, on your mind and some of the stuff that you would like to have me cover. Do you like the music in the background? If you don't like the music in the background, you know, maybe I might negotiate. You know, I always remember it's my show, but I aim to please. You know, I'm one of those type of brothers. I want to always make sure that I'm giving the people that's listening what they want. Right now, I'm, um, they know I'm on... Um, Google Plus, you can follow me or friend me or put me in one of your circles on Google Plus. You can also friend me on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter as well. Um, on Twitter, I'm H A number two T I M. 
Instagram slash Twitter or Twitter slash Hot Tim. And on Google Plus, I'm Hot Tim. You can look up H A number two T I M. They might let you go to me. If not, just put H A A T I M and I'm Giamme. All right, now. Also, you can follow my blog at www.giamijourney.com. Um, on there, I've been posting stories lately. I haven't, I haven't been writing a lot of stuff because I've been pouring my writing into other stuff. So, you know, uh, you can catch up on some of my old stuff before I start writing again. Also, follow me on YouTube because I'm going to start posting videos. I got this new phone. I'm experimenting with it. And I'm going to really, really up the game. So now, you know, I move from broadcasting on my phone to being able to broadcast on my own computer. Now I got my own netbook I'm using. I'm Chrome everything. You know what I'm saying? I love, I love how this whole piece works. And all my stuff is automatically uploaded. I love being able to um, download different apps that I can use for free. And some of them I pay for so now before I really get too deep in the show I want to talk to you about some of the things that I love first off I want to start with oxy water the world's first oxygen that has mineral water um, you could try oxy water black oxy water pink cherry pomegranate olive citrus passion berry for more information about oxy water go to www.tryoxywater.com Another one is Orange 82. It's an electronic music label, and the music in the background that you hear comes from Orange 82. Permission of Orange 82 for me to be able to use it on my show. Um, you can find out more about them at www.orange82.com. I also want to send shots out to my venue. Um, I'm up here at the Shisha Lounge, 2369 North High Street. I have it mapped out on my. Uh, on my Google Plus site, you know what I'm saying? So you can go and find it. You can map your way over here and come and join me. Hook is on me. So come on now. Enjoy yourself. Send out shots to Unidaji Capoeira under the leadership of Monitor Dentista. Uh, they have schools in Cleveland, Columbus, Dayton, Toledo, Chicago, and Decatur, Madison, Alabama. You can come join, them, join, join, them, join us at practice on... Fridays from 79, Sundays from 12 to 2 over at the Millennium Community School, um, um, 3500 Refugee Road, in Columbus, Ohio. Also, once again, I want to send shouts out to uh, New Harvest Urban Art Complex. We started our poetry, um, well, we're doing what we call rituals, so poetry emerges out of You know I work a lot with emergence, so, you know, y'all got to really deal with me with this emergence thing, I know it makes some of y'all feel uncomfortable not knowing exactly what's going to happen, but I love it because that is the way the world flows. You don't know what's going to happen. You could be the best of planners and things fall apart, so you got to be able to adjust, so I'm real good at that. Now, I have people around me that are excellent planners, and I use their skills when it's necessary, you know, um, but, you know, we do that, so... Um, check out New Harvest Art Complex. We there Wednesday night from nine to about twelve, depending on what crowd get there. The crowd you, we starting off slower like we did before, and we are gonna build it up, you know, because I'm not involved in anything that's not moving towards a movement, that's not moving towards uh, bringing people that are conscious together. I like to say that the uh, the poetry that I try to uh, I do and the poetry that some of the poets that come up to New Harvest do is poetry that poets listen to. You know what I'm saying? Come up there for some motivation, some inspiration, and 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 bring your pen. Do some writing. You don't necessarily have to share, but I would love to hear what you are creating because you never know what your work of art will do for someone else. So now, let's get into the first thing that I want to talk about. Now, those of you that's been um, listening know that I have been on this failure kick for maybe six months. So I was blessed to get Fela's whole catalog. I'm talking about 135 songs off of 70 albums. Now, let me let me familiarize you with Fela before we get too deep and you like, well, what's it got to do with the show? Fela Kuti from Nigeria. You need to really check them out, especially those of you that's involved with the movement because this is all about movement this is all about movement and and struggle for justice in the world Fela Kuti was an artist that 
that was putting out a message so strong that the Nigerian government had the military attack this man. I mean, this 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 is dope. He he moved to such a level where he was thinking about running for political office. I want you to think about that shit. You got an artist who is striving to change the world so much that he not only puts it down on the albums, he puts it down in politics. And when you listen to his music, you can't help but to be moved. Now, bring it back around to what I wanted to talk about right now. So I'm listening to Fela, and I'm going through all these tracks. Now, first thing you need to know before you jump into Fela, you're not going to get on there and get a quick three-minute listen. Because I have not ran into one song of Fela's that's under seven minutes long. Second, let me give you the regimen to get started, just in case you're not used to this type of music. Now, first, get the song called Water. Water. W-A-T-E-R Check it out, listen to Water And try to start deciphering some of the words Now Water got a real catchy beat And I'm choosing Water Because it's my daughter's favorite song So her being two She she could sing the chorus Water, you're not your enemies Water, you're not your enemies She loves that You know what I'm saying So if a child could catch it, you can catch it And listen to the lyrics and I say, listen to it for a couple of times. Give it an opportunity because your ear might not be used to the music and then start trying to decipher the message. Then move on to Lady. Lady is a, is a popular tune. You can hear it. Other artists did it. Um, uh, one of Stature that did it was a gentleman by the name of Hugh Masakila. He did Lady. Um, he did a real good version of it too. But check out Lady. Listen to the beat. And try to catch the message. Then after you get done with Lady, go on and check out Gentleman, right? Now, after you check out Gentleman, build up. Now, the song I'm going to give you is a marathon song. You got to build up your tolerance for the music. You got to start listening and bobbing your head to the beat. When you catch yourself unconsciously bobbing your head to the beat, you might be ready for this song. Now, the song that touched me today. Day, and I've been listening to it over and over again. The short name is CBB. It said it's called Confusion Breaks Bones. Listen, the title says it all. I mean, I mean, just think about that whole concept. Confusion break bones. Now he gets into politics in there, he gets into economics in there, he gets into the spiritual. He called it the spiritual underground game. And that's what I'm kicking at you. Some spiritual underground game. And he lays the track out. Him, I listen, I don't even know how many motherfuckers he got in that. How, he got a lot of people in the band because it's, I mean, it's it's some old funk stuff. But the piece, the reason that I, I, I promote artists like Fela, and I've been listening to some James Brown and some Funkadelic, and I've been going back, doing some Sankofa, going back and fetching it so that I could bring it back for y'all. So I could remember some of the stuff that was playing when I was young that I really didn't understand. And I'm, what I'm thinking about doing is setting up a radio station where I could have conscious music. Not just hip-hop, but just conscious music all around. Because when you start really listening to the music, because now, just follow my train of thought. I am eclectic when it comes to music. I like good music, but I wouldn't always like that because I was taught that I was only supposed to listen to a certain type of music. So for a long time, I only listened to a certain type of music. And then I started finding out that black people did other types of music. As a matter of fact, we created a lot of different forms of music, namely like rock and roll. So I started listening to some Jimi Hendrix when I found out Jimi Hendrix who Jimi Hendrix was so I started listening to Jimi Hendrix so I listened to Jimi Hendrix and I came through my phases and I started listening to a lot of conscious rap both so I I'm listening to hip-hop and I'm trying to make a connection for hip-hop for young people now I want you to think about this now we go all the way back 
to us being dropped off here and snatched up and left here and in prison. Some people want to say slavery, but all of us did, as I'm going to get to the discussion later, all of us didn't bend down to slavery. So I don't like to say slave because when you say slave, that means you basically give up, gave up. We were captives. You remember that. Say it with me. You was a captive. Your ancestors was captives. Slaves give up. Captives is constantly looking for freedom. Even, even if their resistance is not direct. If they do an indirect, um, indirect struggle, it's still struggle. Like, for example, I may not feel like plowing this week and everybody is down with me. All of a sudden, a barn catch on fire. Passive resistance. You know what I'm saying? We do little passive resistance shit. Like, I don't know how the barn called on fire, massa. You know what I'm saying? The shit just went up in flames, sir. I, you, what you want me to do about that? You know what I'm saying? You, you know, so you had passive resistance going on. So we never really, we never gave up. Some did. But it's a large majority of us that didn't. But the point that I'm trying to make is this. And listen to me clear. There's a direct connection to where we was when we got dropped off here to now. Especially with the music. Because the music, we have always used music to deliver messages. That's why I say artists are the vanguard of revolution. I started by saying poets. But then at first, at first I was talking about poets are the vanguard of revolution. But then somebody opened up my mind to the fact that it's not poets, it's artists. Our artists have always led the revolution. And I'm using art to even encompass those religious and political leaders because their rhetoric is based on an art form that we have. Rhetoric is an art form. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you, you have to develop that. You just don't get up on stage and just start talking. You don't just get on stage and start debating. You don't get on stage and, and just start preaching. You know what I'm saying? There's some practice with that. There's some repetition with that. That's an art. And you cultivate that art. You become good at that art. And you make people dance in a different way. You know what I'm saying? You bring light to people instead of just making them jump up and want to groove. But some talkers are good enough to make people want to do that. But um, I digress. Now, let's follow this line. So we get dropped off here and we start doing our music. Out of our folk music came this thing called the blues. Now, the blues came and still is here, but blues gave birth to the form of music called jazz. And jazz gave birth to swing, and jazz and swing gave birth to what was called bebop. Now, you always had individual artists that was on the fringes of the art form. And they would develop their mastery of the art form and then start progressing outside of that. So individuals like Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, um, Thelonious Monk. Um, I can't remember the, the other two gentlemen's names. But they formed and coined the phrase called bebop because of the way they played the music. I think they called the note a, fl a flat fifth. Or something like that. They they used a part of the music that a lot of people didn't use, and from them came individuals like Miles Davis and, and John Coltrane and Coleman Hawkins. They come out of that 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 generation that was expanding on where jazz was going, and they took jazz in a sense, in a different direction. Jazz still exists. Swing, in a sense, still exists. And we know the blues still exists. And out of them came this concept of bebop. Now, from bebop, you had this whole revolutionary attitude. This, I'm not a boy, I'm a man. As a matter of fact, that's where the term man was popularized because, because a lot of individuals didn't like the fact that they had to walk in back doors to play these clubs and entertain these white folks. So they wanted... They want to recognize, at least recognize each other's manhood and humanity. So they started calling each other man and all of a sudden it became the hip thing to do. So just from those artists right there, they promoted change. Now, out of that, out of the blues, out of jazz, we got this thing called soul music. 
coming up out of blues, somewhere in between jazz and blues, rises this thing called soul music. Out of soul music come this thing called R&B. Now, I don't want to jump too far ahead because they always try to categorize our music. But our music is based on... They don't understand that. You know, you want to control it. You want to be able to quantify it and count it. But you know, true revolution springs out of something that is not even noticed. It springs, it just springs up. And those people who are ready for it when it springs up are the ones that are able to take advantage of it. So out of this come this thing called soul. And you get a brother coming up from Georgia by the name of James Brown. And you get other people that comes up and they're using this whole soul piece. And James Brown using his soul, his soul power, and he's talking about the mind, and he's talking about all these other things, and out of, out of that soul come this, this thing, because the music becomes, they can't even think of a word, so they come up with a word, it kind of smells, it's funky, so you get this funk thing that flows up out of this soul, and out of that soul, you also get this R&B thing, because they had to find some way to monitor it and control it because when we start naming things we start trying fi to figure we can control them so we name it so we name it rhythm and blues come on now give me a break um then out of this soul and out of this funk the children of soul and funk comes around 1972 out of there listening to that music and coming up during that time this thing called hip hop and when you listen to hip hop, hip hop is just redone soul and funk. Redone soul and funk. So, um, now, that with that being said, check out some Fela. Now, Fela fits in there because he brings that soul and connects that African piece to what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? So, it's, it's, it's some powerful movement music. And I ain't just talking about dance movement. I'm talking about some when you need some inspiration and you need something to fall back on because you are frustrated with working with the people that you're working with and you're frustrated working for the cause that you're working with. Go and listen to some Fela. Go and pull out some James Brown. Go and pull out some hip hop, some real hip hop and, and listen to it and feel the soul and allow it to energize you because that's what music does. You know what I'm saying? So now, on to confusion, break bones. So Fela would take African proverbs and make whole damn songs out of them. Confusion break bones. Confusion breaks bones. I mean, that's a powerful statement. I won't go into it because for those of you that want me to go into it, which I would usually, but I don't, I don't want to do that. I spend too much time on this subject. But there's a proverb about proverbs. It says only a fool needs a proverb to find. You know what I'm saying? Can't really, you know, I can tell you what I think about it. But I want you to think about that confusion break bones. Go and check out that, check out that piece. Now, on to the next. Now, one of my friends, I like to call him my comrade at arms, by the name of Paul um, Rumpelspot, has introduced me to a book. And I want to introduce it to all my listeners because I'm going to be reading on it. And I would love to hear some of your comments on it. It's a book called Maroon, the Implacable. And it's the collected writings of a brother by the name of Russell Maroon Schultz. S-H-O-A-T-Z. It's edited by a brother by the name of Fred Ho, H-O, and Quincy Saw. Um, it has a four by Chuck D., and it has an afterword by a guy by the name of Matt Meyer and Noziwi Madalala Rotledge. Now, um, let me read, just read the back to you. And just check out this book. Um, Amira Baraka says, this book is the very funky instruction manual on how to make revolution. This first ever collection of iconic writings of the former Black Panther, Russell Maroon Schultz, 
spans a historical and theoretical spectrum. Unparalleled in contemporary and contemporary literature. Schultz is a political prisoner currently held in solitary confinement, a condition he has been in for two torturous decades. I didn't say two days. I didn't say two hours. I said two decades. Yet his words ring out with clarity and insight of the keenness of political analysts. Unjustly imprisoned for over 30 years, Maroon was an active leader of the 1907 Black Liberation Movement in Pennsylvania. His daring escape from prison earned him the moniker Maroon. In these explosive pages, he carries on an ancient tradition of escaped slaves and rebels who have created forms of struggle that foreshadow the world we need to build. Maroon's implacable spirit and intense vision give everyone new tools to challenge empire, patriarchy, and the matrix. And the matrix. Um, somebody by the name of Herman Ferguson says, if more young men emulated Maroon's lifestyle, the liberation of black people would be very near at hand. This book is a document of transformation carried out against tremendous odds and told with a searing honesty. That's a statement by Sylvia Frederica. Um, listen, I read the first couple of uh, chapters and it's a good book and it really makes you think about what's going on in the prison system. Now we already know this war on drugs is nothing but a war on young black males and they taking us away in boatloads and, and now I want to make sure the female is involved in that because they doing the same thing with them. But this solitary confinement is is torture. And those of you that's out there listening to me, you really need to understand that. Human beings are social creatures. You torture human beings by taking them and putting some putting them somewhere that's isolated. Now, when you take individuals and you hold them in solitary confinement for over 20 years. Now, this is just the point I'm going to make. And I know a lot of people probably get upset with me. But this is my question. If a motherfucker deserved to be in solitary confinement for 20 years, why not just kill his ass? I mean, I just, I don't understand that. It makes sense to me. Now, how long can you be mad at somebody? What could somebody do that's so wrong? That you will put them in solitary confinement for 20 years. Now, I had the pleasure of speaking to Geronimo Pratt, who was in solitary confinement for over 20 years himself. Geronimo told me himself, face to face, he said, Brother, when they put me in solitary confinement, it got to a point where they welded my door shut just to fuck with me. Because they knew that I wouldn't, they told me I would never leave that place. Now, this is going on in America, the land of the free and the home of the slave. I mean, the home of the brave. What kind of shit is that? How can we go around telling other people how to do democracy when in, within our country right now, we got thousands of political prisoners that are locked up in solitary confinement? And on top of that, we got criminals that we are supposed to be a, be trying to rehabilitate, and we are treating them inhumanely. How do you, how do you, how do you get somebody to change their way, ways by being fucked up yourself? That's like me cussing in front of my children and expecting them not to grow up and cuss. That's like me smoking cigarettes in front of my children and expecting them not to grow up and smoke and being upset when they do you can't treat somebody like an animal and expect them to act any other way now I, I, I don't want to go on that rant but I am suggesting this book for everybody I'm going to push this everywhere I go so everybody know about this man's struggle because it's important that we understand there are individuals that have been imprisoned unjustly. Everybody in jail is not a crook. I know most of the people in jail didn't do what they say they serve in time for. We know a lot of them motherfuckers did do some wrong shit. But there are individuals in America right now who are in jail for unjust reasons. And we will never be able to stand on truth and justice in this country as long as we have people locked up. 
like animals that don't deserve to be locked up. And we'll never be a place of freedom and justice as long as we are treating people regardless of what they did inhumanely. Even if a motherfucker murdered people. How do you change them? How do you how do you get them to feel some remorse if you consistently treat them like animals? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of minute break and I might be able to have an interview. So, um, hold on. I'll be right back. Thank you. 